today on the CTV News at 5, the PC dynasty lives on. The Tories are given another majority government. Plus, what's next for the Wild Rose Party? And Lethbridge singing sensation Stephanie Savage makes it into the finals of McDonald's World Singing Competition. CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. It wasn't the outcome many had anticipated and certainly not what the pollsters were calling. The PCs won the majority seat last night with 61 seats mainly in the urban areas but lost five seats. The Wild Rose picked up 17 seats. That's a jump of 13 seats. The Liberals dropped three seats to finish with five and the NDP gained two seats to end with four. And it is a very new day on the Alberta political landscape. The PCs defied the odds and held on to a majority government. And for the first time, Albertans elected a female premier. This morning, a victorious Alison Redford met with reporters. The comment I'll, I'll make is that um, all of the questions that so many of you asked me based on a lot of those polls didn't reflect either what we were seeing or what I was hearing or feeling. And at the end of the day, I did truly believe that what we needed to do in 28 days was have a robust debate so that Albertans could decide on the future. Premier Redford says there will be a spring sitting of the legislature. No word though when that will start. Albertans may have not brought them to power, but they have made the Wild Rose the official opposition. Party leader Danielle Smith won her first seat in the legislature. She admits they expected to do better, but they did go from no seats to 17. Smith says Albertans have made it clear the Wild Rose needs some time to establish themselves. Albertans have decided that Wild Rose might need some time, might need some time to prove ourselves, some time to establish ourselves. And I relish the opportunity and I am grateful for the responsibility that Albertans have bestowed upon us. Today, I stand at the helm of the official opposition. <laughs> Now, there is a small patch of Tory blue in that sea of wild rose green that now covers southern Alberta. As Terry Boat reports, incumbents Greg Weddick and Bridget Pastor were able to withstand strong challenges in the two Lethbridge ridings. Only hours after winning re-election, Greg Weddick was back at his campaign headquarters. Pleased the PCs had won a majority, but still feeling the loss of PC candidates in rural southern Alberta, including Agriculture Minister Evan Berger. So losing that kind of knowledge and connection to southern Alberta is really a loss, uh, but we will have to go forward and uh, continue to work uh, in those areas and make sure that uh, southern Alberta is represented. In Lethbridge West, Weddick was able to hold off a strong push by the New Democrats first-time candidate Shannon Phillips, who managed to increase provincial NDP support by more than 3,500 votes, most of them at the expense of the Liberals. We have done exactly what we set out to do here in Lethbridge West, which was to bring a very, very solid, credible, progressive alternative to this city, and we have, done, we have accomplished all of our goals. In Lethbridge East, Bridget Pasteur survived her first major test since crossing the floor, and leaving the Liberal ranks to join the PC party. You know, the polls had indicated a great deal of discontent, but I think when people really went into the ballot box, they went, you know what, maybe our province isn't all that bad off and this is not the time to rock the boat. But Liberal candidate Rob Miyashiro was left trying to figure out why so many former supporters abandoned the Liberal ship in a constituency they've held since 1993. It means a couple of things. One is that um, uh, Lethbridge voters uh, may be more identifying with the person. Um, uh, could be a reaction to the whole Wild Rose scare that people were talking about you know, in, the last, in the last few days of the campaign. For the Lethbridge Wild Rose candidates, the results are bittersweet. While they're celebrating success in the rural constituencies, they couldn't break through in Lethbridge where the property rights issue didn't seem to resonate with voters. Uh, it was education and hospitalization, those were the, or health care, those were the big issues. The two city MLAs know they'll have their hands full, making sure the concerns and issues of all Southern Albertans will be clearly understood at the caucus table. The election candidates are now busy cleaning up their offices and picking up their signs. Bridget Pasteur says she's been told there'll be an orientation with new MLAs 
on May 1st. Terry Boat, CTV News, Lethbridge. Now let's take a look at how the wild rose swept across the rest of southern Alberta where decades of Tory rule have come to an end. In the riding of Little Bow, the wild rose ended 25 years of conservative rule. Ian Donovan, a grain farmer from Mossley, took the riding. Incumbent Barry McFarland, who had represented the constituents for 20 years, retired from politics earlier this year. A 37-year conservative dynasty in the Livingstone McLeod riding also came to an end last night after the Wild Roses' Pat Steyer beat out incumbent Evan Berger. Similar story in the Tabor Cardston Warner riding, where the Wild Roses' Gary Bickman took another previous Tory stronghold. Bickman is the deputy mayor of Sterling. He says people in his riding are unhappy and wanted, and wanted a change. The message that we kept re receiving over and over again was a message of we don't have a voice. Our MLA is muzzled. He can't represent us. He can speak up for us in caucus, but he cannot vote the way we need him to vote on the floor of the legislature. The riding of Strathmore Brook saw more of the wild rose wave. The riding had been Tory blue since 1993. Jason Hale took the win over the Tories' Arno Dorkson. After 35 years, the riding of Medicine Hat no longer Tory blue either. And another major upset, the Wild Roses' Blake Peterson had the lead with six polling stations in and never looked back. And in the riding of Cypress Medicine Hat, no exception there. The Wild Rose Party's Drew Barnes ousting incumbent Len Mitzel. Coming up in the news, we look at why so many southern Alberta ridings in the rural areas went, wi uh, went Wild Rose. Now Albertans also had 13 names to choose from four Senate nominees. Voters were asked to choose three senators, Doug Black, Scott Tannis, and Mike Sakay. We're in the top three. They are all PC candidates. To Dory Rossiter now for our first look at the forecast. And Dory, we've got some warm temperatures until about Thursday, but then things are going to change a little bit. Yeah, they are going to change as we hit uh, Thursday, Jackie. We'll, uh, we'll get to some cooler numbers, but really when you look towards the weekend, you'll see that in the five-day forecast. Temperatures are hovering right around average for this time of year. The numbers that we experienced yesterday and again today, those are way above where we should be for this time of year. So just, you know, just back it up a little bit and get back to average. We'll be okay. I'll have more details in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Dory. Looking for average. Now, meanwhile, closing arguments have wrapped up in the second-degree murder trial of Fort McLeod resident Derek Plourd. Plourd is charged with the death of George English in September of 2009. Police say the two got into a fight at English's cabin west of Coleman. English died from a stab wound to his neck. The defense claims that Plourd acted in self-defense, saying English came at him with a pickaxe and was on top of Plourd when he was stabbed. However, Crown prosecutors say Plourd drove to English's cabin with the intent to kill kill him or significantly harm him. They say Plourd was the initial provoker and believe there was no evidence he acted in self-defense. The judge has reserved his decision until May 17th. A medicine hat court has found a 27-year-old woman fit to stand trial in a homicide case dating back to last May in Medicine Hat. The body of 48-year-old Casey Armstrong was discovered last May in a trailer park on Medicine Hat South Side. Autopsy reports confirm Armstrong was stabbed to death and police believe it was planned and deliberate. A psychiatric assessment on the accused, 27-year-old Wendy Scott, found her fit to stand trial. Scott is due back in court on June 25th. And 47-year-old Connie Oakes is also charged with first-degree murder in the case. Lethbridge police have charged a 23-year-old Lethbridge man with sexual assault. Friday night, officers responded to a report of an incident happening in the parking lot along the 400 block of Scenic Drive South. And police say they found a man sexually assaulting an unconscious 18-year-old woman. She was treated and released from hospital. Christopher Hames Hindbull faces one charge of sexual assault and is expected to appear in court on May 16th. Well, a huge fire has consumed almost a block of downtown Cranbrook. Firefighters responded around 1.15 this morning. Four downtown buildings were completely gutted. Crews sealed off the downtown so they had room to fight the blaze. There was no indication at this time what sparked the fire. The fire chief says the age of the buildings made fighting the fire a real challenge. Certainly, you know, I think there was probably three different stages here where we thought maybe we could hold it, but um, just on the age of the building, uh, the, the structures are probably all over 100 years old, uh, wood frame structures, so um, yeah, it was very, very tough to hold into one structure. We'd just be getting a handle on it, and we'd have to pull crews out uh, for the safety of our members, and then we didn't have a chance to hold it. The fire investigation is expected to last several days. 
A 20-year-old man faces charges after fire destroyed Airwood School late Friday night. RCMP say four other property fires that evening are also being considered suspicious. Theron Marjoris of Siksika Nation faces five counts of arson and several other charges. The school's entrance destroyed by fire and the windows were smashed out. The building won't be used for the rest of the school year. Arrowwood School's 80 students will now continue classes tomorrow in the local community centre. Local police hosted a community barbecue at Community Hall to take a stand against hate crimes today. Officers say the crimes marginalize human rights and erode multiculturalism. Uh, hate crimes happen because people are intolerant of others um, and maybe they don't understand what other people are about or, or they don't understand the culture and uh, they react negatively. Officers say educating people on their similarities rather than their differences can help prevent hate crimes from happening. Amnesty International is holding a special screening of what they call an emotional real-life tragedy. <laughs> These are scenes from the movie Bhopali, which will be shown tonight at the Lethbridge Public Library. It's a documentary-style film about the lasting effects of the Union Carbine gas disaster in India 27 years ago. The gas leak killed 20,000 people in the city of Bhopal in 1984. A spokesperson for Amnesty says it's an emotional story. The film is made by award-winning director Van Maximilian Carlson, and it documents the life and experiences of the second-generation victims of this ongoing disaster, how they survive life amongst the remains of uh, contamination, horrifying death, and how they are coping up with the ongoing social, medical, economical disaster. The screening goes tonight, 6.30, at the Lethbridge Public Library Theatre, and admission is free. The Alberta Federation of Labour got its start in Lethbridge a century ago. They're celebrating their 100th birthday in a couple of weeks with an old-fashioned labour picnic. Folk artist Maria Dunn will get the party started Friday, May the 4th. Then on Saturday, there will be a banner parade of unions starting at City Hall. They'll march to Galt Gardens where there will be a free picnic and games at noon. The excitement really has been building for the past couple years. Uh, the Alberta Federation of Labour Centennial is this year and it was formed in Lethbridge and I've been so thrilled to be a part of this committee organizing it. We have more than 20 uh, representatives who've been meeting regularly, building the energy. We've um, raised lots of money so that we can offer this free to our whole community so we can celebrate 100 years of work. And the Gaunt Museum will be presenting a three-month exhibit on the history of labour here in Alberta. On the markets today, the dollar gained a little bit of leverage with an update. Here are the closing numbers.